Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, this uh, uh, OSH uh, webinar on female safety leaders. Um, my name is Harman. I'm the moderator for tonight. Um, so let's start the uh, webinar. Um, may I introduce uh, our uh, chair for Hong Kong branch uh, this year, uh, Sarah Davidson, to give us uh, the opening. Sarah? Thank you and welcome everyone to tonight's uh, webinar. It's great to see so many of you here online. Um, pleased to be representing and, and having to speak our female safety leaders. Um, part of my commitment for this term was to add some diversity and inclusion to, to the IOS branch. So I'm very I'm happy to welcome our guest speakers, Mandy and Sarah, for today. Um, please continue to participate in our event. And don't forget tomorrow, we do have um, the IOS Blueprint session um, so that you can learn more about the new CPD framework. So please, again, if you haven't already, um, please sign up and join that session. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Okay, um, before we start with the uh, webinar, uh, let me uh, remind uh, everybody a little bit about the housekeeping. Uh, like, first of all, uh, you, you should keep your mic microphone uh, muted. Uh, you can choose to, to keep your camera on or off, um, and um, you need to turn your view to speaker view. Oops, let me stop here. Whoops. Okay, sorry. Uh, let me fix the. Okay. Um, Kathleen, can you uh, keep the keep it in the speaker? Uh, will and uh, if you have any question, then uh, please feel free to uh, uh, type it in the chat box, and we'll try to answer them uh, as soon as uh, 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 as much as we can. Okay, and of course, uh, this presentation will be uh, recorded, and so um, you can review it uh, later on. Okay, so um, so let's start with our webinar. Um, we are very uh, delighted uh, to have uh, two speakers. Um, Ms. Sarah Basford uh, from CBRE and uh, Ms. Mandy So, which is sitting right next to me. Uh, she is from uh, uh, JRL. Okay, so uh, as a beginning, uh, uh, Sarah Basford, uh, can you briefly introduce yourself first? Yeah, of, co of course, no problem, Harman. Hi, everybody. It's great to be speaking with you this evening. Um, so my name is Sarah Basford. Um, I've been working in health and safety for about 15 years now. Um, and like many of you on this call, I'm sure, um, I didn't originally plan to come into a health and safety career when I left school. Um, I actually went to university to do a sports degree um, and ended up working for a sports retailer um, in the UK. And when I was in my early 20s as part of that role, I was asked to look after health and safety. And I really, really enjoyed it. So um, I actually took the transition from working in retail. I went back to university. I did a health and safety degree um, and I've been working in health and safety ever since then. So um, my background is that I've worked in hospitality and leisure, travel and tourism, and more recently um, in property management um, for CBRE, where I've been for the last four and a half years. So um, that's a, a brief introduction to me. Yeah, thank you. Yes, we'll <laughs> be. Yeah, good enough. Yes, I appreciate that. So Mandy, how about you? Can you introduce yourself then? Um, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to see everyone in here. I'm Mandy So from Hong Kong at JLL. I've been working for safety about eight years. Uh, I, same as Sarah, I'm not pretending to get into working in safety beginning. I was like, I was working for, um, when I was like, after my graduate, I back to Hong Kong and uh, working for the property management for about 10 years. But I have an opportunity to meeting one of my um, outdoor advertising uh, company. And then I was like, change the field and get touch with some of the, um, like the works in uh, health and safety and, uh, about uh, outdoor, outdoor advertising and also working for a MKRO project. So that's been me and uh, leading me to get into health and safety. At current, I was working in JLL and looking after uh, the, uh, I cost them, um, the safety across my re uh, Hong Kong regions and um, it's almost eight years now. So this is my background. Okay, thank you, Mandy. So uh, let's start with some um, questions. Okay, we prepared. 
So uh, Sarah, so can you describe about your leadership style and how you lead other people, particularly uh, your male colleagues? Yeah, of course. So I think the first thing is um, the difference between being a leader and being a manager. So in terms of leadership, I try to be as open as possible with my team, as flexible as possible, um, and try and communicate well with them, get to know the team um, on an individual basis, because I think that that forms really strong um, you know, relationships in the workplace. Um, and I think also just having that empathy and understanding um, is really important to try and um, develop those kind of relationships that you're um, building um, across the team. Um, we have a very diverse team here at CBRE, which is excellent, uh, particularly in the gender space for property management. We have a very evenly split team. So um, understanding a bit more about the individuals and um, you know what their motivations are and what their background is, I feel is really important. So I, I just try to um, to use those kind of communication skills to to really establish um, the relationship and help us build um, together as a team. Ah, thank you. So, Mandy, so how about you? What's your leadership style then? I think I have a different leadership uh, in different stages. When I was like, uh, maybe I say junior manager, when I stepping in to get start to be a manager, always like because we are the Chinese culture, mm -hmm. we always think, oh, we have authority and telling the people what you should do and what you should follow. <laughs> and then that is definitely- is Not, not, not working. working way now, right? <laughs> no, no, because I think uh, for even those like different um, like male or female or whatever the, the call it in different generation, they we need to understand more about um, what is uh, mm. their goal and we, we want to achieve the common goal, not just instruction anyone. So at this moment and or at, uh, right now I've been like uh, become a leader more and more uh, years and the earning more experience, I think I will, uh, also agree of Sarah, Sarah for uh, leadership. We need to be more understand, uh, open mind, and like uh, well communication with our team to letting them know uh, why you like making that direction or disorder, and also listen to them uh, mm -hmm. to let them uh, like uh, co cooperate with you. And mm -hmm. our angle is we complete the task and um, successful in safe way. Yeah. Okay, so from what I heard from uh, both of you, my understanding is uh, uh, open mind, uh, uh, building relationship. I think this is something key that uh, I think in your leadership style is not like, the, your, as many of you just mentioned, is an old fashioned style, mm -hmm. the Chinese style, you need to do this, you need to yeah. do that. This is probably not, not the way. Okay, yeah. so um, I add on one question for both of you. Maybe you can uh, think about that. So is that because um, uh, both JRL and CBRE is the um, uh, foreign company. Like I think both both are American company, right? The, uh, is, is it going to be a, like some kind of like a contributing to uh, towards uh, your leadership style? Because uh, American company or multinational corporation, they have some kind of like a a, a very open uh, working culture. Is, is that true? What do you think? Sarah? So, so yeah, I definitely think that's true. And I think that because of the nature of CBRE being such a global company and as having, um, you know, over 40 markets within property management alone worldwide, we work with a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds. There are lots of different safety cultures um, and lots of different levels of understanding of safety across the, the globe and the people that we work with. So I also think you know, going speaking to what I mentioned before about understanding people and their background and you know, having those conversations, I think that because we work in such a large organization with such a diverse group of people that it's very difficult to understand what someone's point of view is if you don't speak to them to try and understand that. So I definitely think as a result of that, yes, um, you need to make sure you, um, you know, consider all of those different backgrounds. But I also think because it's such a large and well-established organization, we also have a really good culture within the business to develop things like our, um, you know, uh, women's network and uh, diversity um, generally. And I think that that really goes a long way to support our colleagues um, and to really make sure that everybody feels valued within the organization. Oh, Mandy, you're on mute. I still can't hear you, Mandy. 
Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, yes, I think I'm totally agree of uh, Sarah because JL and CBRE is a very, we are basically, we are com a a competitor. <laughs> But we are very, uh, we, we, we did um, have a lot of uh, sharing between those two companies. And also we are also the global company. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, also for Hong Kong, I can see is uh, more changes because, you know, uh, we are our young person, they, they, they are learning a lot of uh, foreign culture. And also we do uh, keeping some of the uh, traditional mm -hmm. Uh, Chinese yep. culture. So I think um, at the moment, uh, diversity, understand people, and also uh, changing the my leadership in Western culture is a good way we are learning yep. and making our society and yep. and, and organization go. Yep. Yeah. So a Western company in a Chinese setting, so that could create some kind of like a, a momentum or some kind of changes towards. Yep. Uh, uh, building up uh, a, 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 a trust relationship with uh, colleagues, right? Yeah. That's good. So Sarah, um, my next question to you is, uh, who inspires you to be a leader? Why? <laughs> okay, so really good question. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go as far back and say my parents inspired me to be a leader. Um, from being very young, they taught me that I could be what I wanted to be in life and that I should follow my ambitions and my dreams. Um, and, and just a, an anecdote for you. So when I was in primary school, when I was, say, uh, five or six years old, I joined a rugby team and I was the only girl in an all boys rugby team. And I think even from that young age, it really taught me that it doesn't matter what your gender or what your background is. You can participate and join um, equally amongst um, the, the rest of your team members. So I was really fortunate about that from uh, from being young. Um, and then as I got older um, and I'm now married, my husband has been really inspirational and supportive of me, which I think um, for women in business is really important. Um, yeah. And so when I decided to retrain in health and safety, um, he supported me so that I could go back to university and, and learn more about kind of the health and safety industry. And, um, you know, his support has been really key to my development. So that's also mm. really important. Um, and then I think lastly, the leaders that I've had that have been really strong leaders that have supported me, that have pushed me forwards for opportunities, that have encouraged me to be better, who have, you know, given me those learning and development opportunities. I think for those people, and there are a few along the way, um, they've been really instrumental for me um, in developing my career. But equally, I've had leaders that I felt potentially aren't as strong. And actually, what they have taught me is that I don't want to lead in a, in a different type of way. So actually, I've learned from really great leaders, all of the positive attributes. But I think from some of the leaders that potentially weren't as strong, I've learned that I don't want to be the type of leader that is always micromanaging people or um, being you know, too hard on people or not understanding about those individuals. So um, I think that those people collectively have had a really big influence on my career. Mm. Oh, that sounds good. Eh? Yeah. So, Mandy. So how about you? Is it is it the same or um, I think who inspire you then? Definitely is uh, in in my career life. Uh, definitely have some leader who spin me up, yeah, mm -hmm. to allow me to demonstrate. Uh, maybe I got a good way to them doing my my work is very good. But uh, become a leader is um, is a kind of my uh, progressively mm -hmm. my 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 self uh, career development. And uh, as Sarah say. Um, sometimes our Chinese is uh, when I was uh, back to my first day. Yeah. We we pretend to tell everyone to follow my my path. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, just like Sarah said, it's not a good way to share share to people yeah. and micromanagement and also putting the pressure to others and making people to uh, deliver the the things is 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 not a good way to do uh, to put the achievement. But um. I think, um, yeah, my current uh, leaders and also my colleague and also is one of my uh, inspire me to become a greater leader and uh, have a greater demonstration mm -hmm. for my myself. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So next question, Sarah, um, <clears throat> have you ever imagined yourself uh, that would be for yourself to uh, which 
at your current level of uh, leadership uh, role in your company? Have you ever thought about that? When you won't want to go into a health and safety role and then, have you ever thought about like uh, you which at that level? So, so I think that's a really difficult question to answer. So first of all, I will talk about kind of uh, being a leader within health and safety. And I would say absolutely yes, that was something that I aspired to achieve from when I first joined the industry. Um, and to do that, I set myself lots and lots of kind of short term goals, medium term goals, longer term goals mm -hmm. to try and progress my career. So whether that be attend a training opportunity or go to a networking event or looking at the type of role I was taking on for my next job or what I was trying to achieve. Um, I think if you ask me whether I thought that role would be within CBRE at this stage in my career, I probably wouldn't have been so confident. Um, it's a huge organization. We have over 100,000 people within the business. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm still under the age of 40. So I, I perhaps wouldn't have been so confident to say to you back then that this would be the role that I would end up in. But I'm obviously delighted that I am. Um, and also that's been a change of industry for me because I started out in hospitality, travel and tourism safety and then moved into um, what was originally facilities management in my prior role before joining CBRE and then into kind of the property management role that I'm in now. So, um, so yeah, I always wanted to aspire to this level, but I'm really pleased that my career has taken the path it has and that I'm with CBRE now. So that one was perhaps a little bit less foreseen. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So Mandy, have you imagined that you, you, you wish at your current level, uh, um, what do you think? I think um, I can say as Sarah, we, we, you never, forecast you you're going to be at uh, end of which role or you target to be which role to to be your end of your career you're always like thinking uh, how you re equip yourself and get what you can get the best you you when you mm -hmm. uh, get into uh, maybe at the moment uh, I want to like start to uh, the, uh, um, how to say um start to learn more about ESG, the common uh, topic across the world, uh, environmental, social, and uh, governance. This is a hot topic. I'm, I'm still learning. So I can't say that I can emergency, uh, imagine uh, how, how far I can go. But what I can say is you have to like open mind and get yourself a long life learning and always ready for for their next challenging or next uh, adventure. Yeah. I think that is the way I, I go into do. So Sarah, um, when you're talking about you reach your uh, uh, current level of the leadership role, then what are the key experience or professional development that got you there? Okay, um, so I think for me, something that was really important was that I didn't necessarily take a, a linear approach. Um, so it wasn't kind of, I got a role, I got the next role, I got the next role and working my way up the ladder. I think some of the key experiences that I had were that um, I was in an established career within retail and then decided to change careers completely. So I went back to kind of the most junior role within health and safety and started again. Um, and I think that taught me an awful lot um, and really kind of um, having to, to, to start your career over again is, is quite challenging. Um, mm. I think that from there, I, I moved into a health and safety manager role um, within um, a hotel and a hotel chain. Um, but I then took another step back to move to a health and safety officer role. So again, what by others might be perceived as a backward step, um, I thought would be really good for me to gain more international experience. So I went from a national role where I was the, the lead back into an international role where I was a more junior member of staff. And so I think that that's something that was really important, um, that everybody's career journey and path is really different. And it doesn't always have to look like you're taking the next step, the next step, the next step. In terms of the more kind of technical qualifications, um, obviously, I mentioned earlier about the health and safety degree. But I also think that platforms such as IOSH and the training and um, webinars that they provide are really important to try and gain understanding of different areas of health and safety that I might not be familiar with. Um, attending, um, you know, training sessions, um, things like um, the ISO certifications um, have also been really important for me. So there's lots of different trainings available. And I think it's important to know what your 
key interests are within health and safety, it's a really big topic um, and that everybody's route is different. So I think for me, there may be some of the, the key learnings that I've taken along the way. Wow, it sounds like you're not changing track, but you are changing industry, you are changing everything. Correct. And then you go sort of like a starting over. That's yeah. going to be really, really, really challenging. Yeah, yeah. and I think health, health and safety is present in so many different industries. So you can move from role to role in different industries, but still do the same job. So um, I think, you know, finding something you're particularly interested in is also really important. Yeah. yeah so same safety. to you, right, Mandy? Yeah. <laughs> health and safety is covered in all, all the workplace. Yeah. Whatever you are in the catering, and uh, hospitality, uh, construction, whatever, is sometimes it's your common sense and how how your ambitions you want to be put hands to do. Yeah, you want yeah. everyone to be safe or go home safe and work smoothly, mm -hmm. then you can doing it yeah. and, and also of course uh, not everyone can like uh, to drop off the job to go back to university to to learn everything but uh, I think on your training and also the uh, and my seminar and Sarah saying uh, a lot of uh, a networking uh, event can build yourself to learn more about safety and also contribute in the uh, environment so so I think Safety is that well wind on you yeah. from your heart and your ambition, then you, you can do it. Good. Yeah. So, um, Sarah, next question is um, for women in the leadership um, role or position. So what kind of benefit do you see or kind of advantage can you see for women that which at that uh, leadership position? Any benefit yeah. or advantage? There, I think there's lots of benefits and advantages. So yeah, absolutely. Um, so for this one, I think that obviously uh, diversity is really important. I think we bring lots of different thoughts um, and lots of different experiences to the table. Um, so by having more women in senior leadership positions, we, we bring that diversity of thought and problem solving and um, understanding. Uh, but also I think that by having women in senior leadership roles, we can also support other women and other female leaders as they kind of progress through organizations. So it yeah. provides a kind of a role model for other women to aspire to, um, mentoring opportunities for other women. Uh, but more importantly, you know, our clients, our clients have um, organizations that are diverse and that have male and female colleagues at the table. And, we want to be able to have a discussion with them and reflect what they're seeing. So um, we're able to have a, a conversation with a really diverse group of people. So I think there are lots of different benefits. And as I say, um, you know, it, it, we've seen really good progression in terms of uh, gender diversity within health and safety over the years. And when I first started working in health and safety 15 years ago, there certainly weren't as many women um, at meetings or um, you know, within the team. So it's really nice to see that that has been progressing as well. Yeah, I think I agree with you that uh, by, by talking about diversity, um, women can bring in some different perspective yep. to the management. And then um, that, would, that would definitely help in um, uh, uh, making some um, wise and correct decision. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Mindy, you, you 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 agree with that, right? Yeah, I I totally agree. But sometimes I uh, and ben, I I believe that benefit is more than the like uh, disadvantage. Disadvantage. Yeah, yeah. Okay. because when I I can only say when when the whatever who even a uh, women or male when they was very green to step into mm -hmm. the new uh, working environment they still like, um, doesn't have much benefit. Uh, but sometimes you have to be yourself and your personality. Women have a little bit benefit okay. because everyone, male or the people will be, uh, be gentle for you a little bit. But I think women are a pretty good communicator, right? Yeah. And uh, more like less like uh, detail oriented. And, and that, that is some kind of advantage that I think for women to be in a top position then, they, they, they can provide some different thinking, different way of doing. And, and that, would, that would be, that, that, that's diversity is all about. That's mm. what I think, okay? Yeah. So um, um, regarding the challenges, I think we just talked about um, Sarah. So what, 
have you ever experienced any resistance um, when you're leading your male colleagues? Um, you know, how do you deal with that? Have you encountered any challenges like that? So I don't, I think I've been really fortunate. I don't think I've really experienced a significant amount of resistance on the base of my gender. So um, I've worked with both male and female colleagues who have been challenging at times. And um, I've worked with uh, male and female colleagues that I've, you know, had really good working relationships with as well. And I think that whenever you're in a situation where you find things challenging, it, again, it's really important to understand that person's perspective and where they're coming from and what they're understanding yep. is but also what their motivation is so what is it that mm -hmm. they want to achieve out of the discussion that you're having and I think for me the most important thing is to be authentic to yourself and um, as I've maybe gotten more mature within my role and um, as I've been working a little bit longer I think one of the key things that I would say and this isn't just to to women on the call but men as well that just be yourself and be authentic and respond as mm -hmm. you feel like is appropriate and um, the right thing to do and you know I try to be as fair as possible I try to be um, you know make sure that I communicate and articulate myself well and it, certain people might require different um, responses so some people might want for your response to be more fact-based and they might want you to go away and find the details so if you're looking at a technical element of health and safety they might want to understand what the laws and the regulations are to convince them in an argument, whereas the others might want details about accidents and incidents that have occurred. So I think understanding the individual you're speaking to is really important. Um, but also when you're looking for job roles, research the companies that you're working with so that you understand what the culture is like. Because I think if you work in an environment where the culture is good and positive and people mm. are taught to you know, have open and honest discussions, then... Um, you know, that's a much more healthy work environment than if you do um, encounter these sorts of situations every day. Yeah. Sarah is a very lucky. Yes. <laughs> that's a good point. Yes, yes. So, Mandy, yes, I remember the same question. Um, we, we talk about it in our Cantonese section. Yeah. Because you mentioned about the Chinese culture. I think this is something that you, you really want to share yeah, with us. Because, um, yeah, because actually, I have uh, less burden at the moment because, yeah. uh, as Sarah said, at this stage, or uh, we are all like uh, senior or like we are like have a same uh, vision. Like, yeah. what we do experience before when I was uh, uh, in the young yeah. leader, younger, the, youngest, <laughs> the Chinese, Chinese culture, because I think it have a very well de uh, development or established in Western, uh, Western country, they, they very, uh, mm -hmm. um, like, uh, put on eyes on safety, yeah. but Chinese, <laughs> I, I can only say our, we are developing, our, our developing. we are developing, yes, safety is very, um, like, put it behind, so you, when you like working with the like fun night staff or the uh, workers, you have to be fixed face and keep <laughs> moaning to them. Oh, I be uh, look, uh, I will very concerning about your safety. I want you to be a uh, safe, uh, completely um, go home safe and yeah. and but you have to keep telling them your like uh, safety. But sometimes they will say fight back. Oh, don't you? Uh, some uh, some people. You, you talk too much, right? <laughs> yeah, you talk too much. Just shut up. I let me do do the work, and you just uh, disappear. Few minute, I can finish the work, and you just you, you won't see anything. But uh, you know, we we want because um we can tolerance all that. So every time we need to go yeah. back and be patient and say, please. If you not listen to me, I have no choice to stop you. <laughs> and then they will bring all the manager and then the supervisor to you and say, "Are you sure you want to stop me?" And or you know, and if we delay, are you going to pay for the penalty? I say, no. If you if you die, I I never forgive myself. Even so, uh, back to again. Yeah. Like, well, so mo most of the time, like when there's uh, some uh, accident, injury, yeah. advice, then people will realize the importance of safety. Then they will listen to you yeah. genuinely. Yeah. So this is this is something that um, I think you just mentioned something like uh, um, if, if, if you're treating them um, with heart. Yeah. And um, then uh, as Sarah just mentioned, uh, it's kind of like a, a building up the relationship together. Mm -hmm. And then um, once uh, your colleagues trust you, 
then they listen to you, and eventually then that's the that's the relationship uh, okay. develop. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. That, that's a good point. Yeah. So um um regarding our next question, uh, Sarah. So um. I think I think when we talk about this question, uh, the power structure. Okay, so um, I think um, when we talk about it before, um, um, uh, because uh, we we work in uh, American company, multinational corporation. I think we we share the same uh, thinking. Okay, like the matrix uh, organization. So um, for women, so how how can you navigate the power structure in your company? So. Um, I mean, I mean, what kind of approach that you 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 uh, encounter that you would uh, change or you switch in order to navigate that power structure in your organization? Yeah. Can you say a little I, bit of that? I think that's one of the hardest questions that you've asked. Um, yes, because yes. because there are again there are so many different make matrix structures in place. Um, and yes, we did we spoke about this the other day and we've got so so many different um kind of reporting lines within the organization up through our country structure up through our line of business structure up through the health and safety reporting structure and so it can be really challenging if there are sometimes some slightly different um requirements depending on you know what the business objectives are or what the country level objectives are so i think again it's communication is really important so that everybody understands what the requirement is what the ask is and which kind of part of the matrix that is referring to. Um, but I also think, again, the communication piece is really, really key because if you're not communicating well, then things can become either lost in translation or one area of the business might not know what another area of the business is trying to achieve. So I think by having frequent uh, touch points, whether that be uh, a regular one-to-one -one catch up with different people within the structure, or whether that be regular team meetings, I think that's really, really critical um, in navigating kind of some of those hierarchies. I think the other thing, again, is understanding who your key stakeholders are um, and really um, understanding, again, what their motivations are from a business perspective um, and, and working with them to try and achieve that. So, um, you know, from a health and safety perspective, a lot of the time we're seen as an overhead and a cost center. But actually, we can contribute and add value to the business by making sure that our people aren't injured, making sure we reduce the number of accidents and incidents that are occurring um, from a psychological uh, safety perspective. Mental health and well-being of our teams is really important as well. So um, focusing in that area. And I think that if there is a conflict between, um, you know, different areas of the business and what you're trying to achieve, it's just making sure that you have all of the right people in the room to have those discussions so that everybody, um, we have the phrase, everybody is on the same page. So everybody is mm -hmm. understanding the same thing. Um, so I think that that's also really important. Um, and, and again, you know, you, you might have to have some really challenging conversations and convince people, but I think if you're, um, you know, really kind of open and honest with them in, in what your objectives are, then that also is really helpful. Um, so, so Mandy, I don't know whether um, you have maybe a different perspective on that. No, um, I, I think I think I, I just recall you you talk about something similar yes. to Sarah last last time when we were having a Cantonese section. Because um, Sarah, you're right. Uh, not you, you just not only need to know about your 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 own profession. You need to know about your colleagues. You need to know about other departments' uh, yeah. operations in order to uh, think from there perspective yeah and then try to get the, the common goal yeah get the Go common ahead. goal and achieve um the the task yeah so yeah i think i think you you yeah. should share the same basically yeah right we, we do have a because uh i'm working in jr is a western company i i think it's about the same as sarah your uh, experience uh actually hong kong or uh, chinese culture is start to change and get more um, women mm -hmm. and, and uh, become a leader. Um, I can think uh, that's uh, by the navigate the power structure. I think it's a uh, very like uh, 18, 19 uh, <laughs> generation or something like century because uh, we do have a uh, like Chinese culture. Power is like just people to instruct yeah. people or just follow you. But now we are want to be a uh, 
uh, leader or inspire other people to do the right thing. So, so I think, um, yeah, it's about the same as Sarah you share. But I think the important point is uh, you, you, you both of you are mentioning something like um, uh, in, I think probably in uh, whatever company you're in, um, whatever uh, way you are working with, I think open mind is something that you need to uh, yeah. uh, be having. Because otherwise, I mean, uh, I, I, as you said, uh, power is very important in uh, probably a traditional Chinese company. But I think for a multinational company, global company, uh, I think uh, for uh, people for, for people working in company like this, um, they need to be uh, having some kind of like open thinking, mm -hmm. something that is not traditional. Yeah. I think you 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 mentioned everything uh, already, so I don't want to say more. Okay, so um, my last question for both of you. Okay, so having heard about what your experience, uh, what's your point of view? So what's your advice to other uh, females or basically uh, other safety practitioners? Okay, how to grow their careers and leadership skills? Or uh, what kind of key attributes you feel we all need to develop? So Sarah, you go first. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so another excellent question. Um, so I think as, as my career has gone on and I've taken more senior roles within organizations, um, the softer skills have been more and more important. So obviously the, the technical attributes are important and having the, the technical capabilities to do a, a job. Um, but I feel like the, the listening, the communication, um, the um, being able to put an argument forward to convince others that health and safety is the right thing to do, that those types of um, skills have become more and more important. And not only that, I also think that kind of the the budgeting side of things so understanding you know financial um acumen and background making sure that you're understanding what the objectives of the business are making sure that you're understanding that you know health and safety as i said earlier isn't just a cost center of an organization but can also add um you know add value both to um our own people but also the services that we're providing to clients so i think having opportunities to learn more about the skills that go above and beyond health and safety are really important. Um, again, those leadership um, qualities. So um, it might be uh, attending some sort of uh, management training. Oh, I have some background noise now. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, we have some technical problem here. We can't hear you. Oh. Can everybody hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, Sarah. Okay, perfect, thank you, just checking. Um, and I hope that you got uh, the majority of that um, from, from what I had said before, but yeah, I think that the kind of wider skill set beyond just the health and safety technical um, skills are really important. So um, the communication, presentation skills, budgeting and finance skills, business acumen are really important because again, you really need to understand um, what the budget is that you have to spend in a year, whether that then is focused on your training, whether that's focused on your management system, whether that's focused on health and well-being. So it really brings in kind of that that wider piece. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yes, this is this is probably something that we so many how to um yeah the technique Sarah is already saying about it. But uh, um, for me, yeah, it's always like uh, be be confident, open mind, collaboration with others, and also uh, empathy with other people. That that will be my suggestion. Be to, humanized, right? Yeah. <laughs> be more humanized yeah. with, to people, towards people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Yes, I really appreciate uh, our discussion. So let's go into the uh, uh, Q and A session then. So. Uh, can you look at the questions that we have? And let's see. Okay. Um, let me take a look at that. Uh, let's see. Ah, oh, like I can see it then. Um, I think. So, um, how long would you like me to help? So there's there's a question from Galena Bag. How do you handle okay, situations sure. yeah, okay. where you're short in temper? days where you just don't feel like you're not at your best state to support coach 
or mentor, perhaps due to personal re reasons or, or other reasons. So when you're having an off day or you don't really feel like yourself, how do you handle the need to step up and be a leader? Okay. So which we, who wants to answer that? <laughs> I don't mind. Mandy, do you want to go first for this one? I'm happy to, we've maybe both answered. Do you want to go first this time? Um, okay, uh, let's, let me. I think, I, I think um, firstly, yeah, is uh, if you're facing something, uh, it's not good, yeah? Deep breath, make yourself clear and what, what is the aims and, and uh, be calm and then getting some someone uh, to help you out or or you you get more uh, resources resources or um, make yourself care first to 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 uh, figure out what what is the yeah. end goal and don't make any decision when you are anger <laughs> yeah listen to people <laughs> and get more information before making decision that's my yeah. I, I think that's really important not to make decisions when you're angry, Mandy. I like that a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think for me, having a good support network around you is really important. So knowing who your allies are within the team. So if you are having a particularly bad day, you know who it is that you can speak to for support and help. Um, I think everyone needs help from time to time. So don't be afraid to ask for it if that's the case. Um, if you have to, um, you know, have that meeting, uh, try and take a little bit of time to prepare for it before you go into that. Or otherwise, if it's possible to maybe adjust the timing, maybe you were able to reschedule something until the following day when perhaps you'll have had a bit of time to, um, you know, think and consider, then maybe that would also be the case. And I, again, I feel really lucky within the organisation that I work that we have a really supportive culture in place and everybody recognises that people have good and bad days. So I'm pretty open with my colleagues. If I'm having a bad day, I will share that with them. If I'm having a good day, I will share that with them as well. Um, I think it's probably more difficult when you're speaking to clients directly, mm -hmm. but um, I think if your team are there and um, you, you support them and they support you, then you can often overcome a lot of the challenges that you have. But otherwise I think breathe, have like breathing before you go into a meeting, just calming yourself, making sure you give yourself a minute to think about an answer before you respond to your point, Mandy, so you don't respond in haste if you're feeling um, slightly yeah. angry on every, any given day. I think that's also a, a really important step to take. That's a hard yeah, question. Yeah, that sounds good, Sarah. Yeah, you sounds like uh, you 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 not act like uh, you you are like a boss. Uh, you know, uh, you let your colleagues feel like uh, you you uh, just like ordinary people. You also and have your passion. Your your yeah. That's good. That's and good. sometimes you have to believe your team. Yes. Yeah. We are not alone. We are not single or alone. We are working as a team. Okay. Um, let me get to another question. Uh, I think it's uh, Jalina. Or, yeah, let's roll down a little bit. Jalina, uh, question is, uh, uh, I think she, uh, she said, uh, I'm, I'm also in the global uh, IFM industry of, with only four years of uh, experience in OSH and food safety so far. My background is in uh, ESG, mm. okay, as Mandy just mentioned, and not very technical yet. So what advice uh, can you give in handling prejudice in the workplace, especially if you are a relatively new manager considering long technical background? I think that's really technical matters for health and safety? Or what do you think? Um, I think learning from the old guy, yeah, listen to them. And every time they, they will share the information, just uh, you have to bear in mind. Yep. We think, uh, is that correct? And of course, you have to think you can bring in a lot of new vision than their, their original plan. Um, and as uh, I was thinking is uh, communication, understand why they was doing like this. And, and, and also in the free times, uh, get more time to more understand the project before you give uh, uh, any, any uh, opinions or that the instruction to others. Uh, of also, um, and no, no socket uh, to, to, to learning, you have to, if you don't have any telco background, 
probably uh, you have to like um, learn more mm -hmm. from others third party. That's so, no shock. So Sarah, how about what do you think about prejudice in uh, workplace? This, this, this is, is it common in uh, like a Western country like UK or so, I think so in I'm, Hong Kong, yes, it's very subtle. So I'm, I'm sure that it happens. I think, again, we're really fortunate that it's not common um, within kind of the organisations that I've worked in. Um, I agree with the points that Mandy has um, already made um, just with regards to there's no shortcut to learning and it takes time to build up that technical expertise. Um, but I also think on the flip side to that, that everybody has been in your position. Everybody has been in a position that they are the one that knows the least in the room. And that doesn't stop when you get into a leadership role. It's often the case that I will join a meeting with somebody and they will have better technical expertise than me in a particular area because they have a different background. So mm -hmm. I think don't be afraid to ask questions um, because the only way you will learn is by asking those questions and getting the answers. Try to be disciplined in terms of, you know, self-learning. And if there is a particular area that you're being asked to look into, you know, make the most of the resources available to you, whether that be um, through, you know, colleagues and support from within the organisation you work, or whether that be um, online resources um, such as your, you know, government health and safety pages or um, online articles that have been published. Um, and... And I think find yourself an ally within the organization, whether that be uh, male or female, find somebody who is there and will support you and guide you and mentor mm -hmm. you um, because they will really help you to be able to deal with some of those challenges. They might be familiar with the individuals you're speaking about who might be more challenging to you. They might be able to offer you guidance on how to deal with those individuals. So um, I think really try and form your own support network within your business and, and Honestly, just don't be afraid to ask questions because yeah. that's the only way you'll you'll be able to learn more about that situation. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. Um, I think we have some other question like uh, from uh, Alvin again. Uh, he asked about the challenges that uh, females uh, leaders are facing. I think we, we have answered that already. Yeah. Um, I think I I am seeing another uh, uh, probably some uh, opinion or comment from uh, Johnny Johnny Learn. Okay, uh, I think she, yeah. she said um, uh, she's a Hong Konger, um, now working in UK as a, a heaven city advisor. Um, so she said from her observation, women have more opportunity in heaven city industry in UK than in Hong Kong. Is that true, Sarah? Um, I have to say that's a really difficult question to answer because I'm less familiar with um, kind of the situation in Hong Kong, but from my experience in the UK, I feel like there are lots of opportunities available to women in the industry um, and, and particularly across different sectors as well. So, um, you know, not just within kind of the property management or facilities management industry, but across construction, retail, um, you know, lots of different industries. So, yes, I do think that there are lots of opportunities. But based on what Mandy has said, I think that those opportunities are becoming more frequent in Hong Kong as well, which is really positive to hear. Yeah, uh, Hong Kong, because um, Hong Kong majorly uh, sa health and safety in, is in construction field. Um, but now uh, I think it's more company, they was last uh, start like uh, put uh, safety in more position, uh, important position, because uh, as before we mentioned about ESG, uh, that's also uh, safety, well-being, and also uh, mental health is yeah. also part of that. So um, may, I hope that um, health and safety opportunity will be getting more and more a opportunity, of opportunity in Hong Kong in the future. But uh, I definitely, uh, I can see, see that yeah. it's a good in so I think uh, for everybody's uh, information, uh, when 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 we uh, start out uh, planning on this uh, webinar on this topic, female safety leaders, uh, I think we 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 are thinking of something like that. We want to promote more uh, females to join this profession because uh, um, we're talking about occupational health and safety, or even like uh, uh, I mean, in different uh, industry. I think this is um, uh, common. Whether you are in uh, um, uh, real estate, uh, in construction, or in any other industry, but I think um, health and safety, occupational health and safety, are basically the same. Yeah. 
when you're talking about the the the, the thinking, the idea, uh, the knowledge, uh, it's just a matter of how you apply it um, in your work workplace. No matter what kind of industry you're in, mm -hmm. and so that's why we we want to um, not to mention uh, this month is uh, uh, we got International Women's Days uh, month. Um, I think um, not only JRL, not only CBRE, they are uh, promoting that. Yeah. My company AECOM, um, we are also promoting uh, International Women's Day, celebrating that as well. So basically, uh, we want to attract more people. I mean, particularly women, uh, female, to join. Uh, this profession and hopefully yeah. and I hope that um, uh, after this seminar uh, webinar and we hope that uh, more and more female would consider um, joining this profession yeah okay uh, let's see oh we got some more <laughs> let's see. let me take a look at that okay we still have some time right um, let's see ah uh, also it's from Johnny uh, she, she makes some other comment um, she said uh, she recently met a lady from Europe. She asked me to uh, uh, whether construction company welcome or consider women to take health and safety role. Definitely. Yeah, uh, I know a lot of uh, women. I, I think in Europe, this is pretty phenomenal, right? So, more, so the, more the, the, joining, right? I think there are more women joining health and safety careers across all industries and I, and I don't think that that's necessarily restricted to just Europe I think across the board there are more women joining the industry the company I worked for before the one I'm at now was a construction company um, there was I would say probably a slightly larger uh, gap between male and female colleagues in that industry but there definitely were an increase of women joining construction as well so I certainly think that it's a career that is open to to women but Perhaps what we need to do is just look at, you know, the, the pool of talent that we're working with and making sure that younger women and girls know that, you know, a, a construction or a health and safety career is possible and that um, they will be welcomed and accepted. So um, I think that there's still a lot more to do to bring people in at the, you know, at the kind of um, the starting point of people's careers so that they know that that's an opportunity for them. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, so um, so I think it's about time to uh, web up. So uh, thank you, uh, everybody, uh, for participating in this uh, webinar. And uh, I think I would like to thank you, uh, Sarah Basrod and uh, Mandy So, uh, to come and uh, 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 be our speakers tonight. And um, uh, I also thank you, Sarah Davidson, for giving us an opening for this uh, event. And hope everybody will get uh, some in ideas, insights from our discussion, and um, have a good evening. Thank you, and bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Yep. Bye.